on muted. Right, so we see we see that going good. All right, and then that's good. So there's about a I think we we think it's about like a 30 second delay between what we're doing and what you're seeing. Uh, but uh, this is our first stream, and we are excited to bring this series to you. Uh, it's mostly going to be in the format of a live stream, and there will be a couple occasions, uh, depending on how it works out. There will be a couple occasions of maybe we'll record. Um, you know, pre-record these episodes and give them, give them like edit them down and schedule them if we can't do live streams. But our intention is to live stream these. Uh, so the goal here is, as you can see in the description, uh, my name's Patrick and I bring about 10 years of experience in software engineering. And my wife here, Jessica, is a nurse and she has shown some interest in learning software engineering. So I'm very excited to teach her. Uh, and what better way than to do that in real time in front of all of you and maybe she'll ask the questions that you guys have. Uh, so I'll let her speak about herself a little bit. So this is Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica. I, like he said, uh, I'm a registered nurse, mostly in the ICU and listening to him all the time, doing all of his coding stuff and trying to pick up little pieces here and there decided that I would be interested in learning about this and that maybe other people could benefit from our learning process. So I hope you guys enjoy our live sessions. We'll see how this turns out. Awesome. Okay. So the first thing I think we'll do is just kind of run over what we did yesterday. Uh, yesterday we installed Visual Studio. It's the same thing that you'll do on every uh, tutorial, whether it be uh, you know, through the Microsoft website, they have great documentation, or if you were to follow another YouTube channel, but we'll just cover it real quick. And so Jess is the one sharing, so uh, we'll have her open um, the Chrome window. We should have planned that prior, but uh, if you open Chrome on your other screen, you can just drag it over, uh, but you're only gonna, you can only drag one tab would probably be best. And then just grab that tab and bring it over. You got it. All right, and then um, I can't see what you're doing now, but that's okay. Uh, so you're gonna go to um, Google and you can Google Visual Studio download. And so if you're on a Windows, you're gonna download Visual Studio Community for Windows, Visual Studio 2022. If you are on Mac, you'll download Visual Studio for Mac 2022. Uh, and we're gonna go with the Community Edition either way. That's gonna give us a free version of Visual Studio and uh, that's what we're using here, and that's what Jess is using, and that should work for you as well as you follow along. So Jess can, I don't know where you are, you wanna explain where you are? I'm just on the Visual Studio, I clicked on the first thing that popped up on Google, um, free downloads, it's different for um, Windows, and then Mac is right down here. All right, and then if you click that, and then you, did you just, you don't have to restart the download because you've already done it. Yeah, I have it downloaded, so I'm so not actually going to click this. That's where you'll go. You'll install it as you install anything else. And once you're done with that, then you'll, that's literally as far as we got. Uh, one thing to note is um, on a Mac, it, it wanted us to install Xcode, which definitely something you want to do if you're on a Mac. Uh, because we are going to, when we uh, set up Visual Studio, um, we're going to check some of the options for uh, .NET MAUI is something you'll see there, um, as well as Xamarin, those options. So there's Android and iOS. So we want to check those boxes as well. And then through the installation process, um, it's going to ask for Xcode. And it'll even tell you get app, and you click that. It opens the app store. It's going to um, go right to Xcode. You can install it. And that'll basically walk you through that stuff. That's a pretty tough install, so uh, plan to just set that up and walk away. Uh, but once you're done with that, I mean, you're going to be all caught up. That's as far as we got. So we can close this window and we will open Visual Studio and then we'll get started. So the first thing we do in Visual Studio, we're going to see uh, what happened over here. Oh, you can close that window. <clears throat> Not the whole thing, but that's fine. Anyway, no, no problem. So. Uh, we're going to create a new project here in Visual Studio. So if, if you see new project or open, we want new. We'll click create new project. 
Uh, mine's gonna look a little different. You can't see that, but Jess can. So, um, but the fundamental templates and things are about the same. So we're gonna start with a console app and we wanna make sure it says C Sharp. Your layout will be different than mine, but um, I imagine you see console app and then to the right is like C Sharp. Do you see that? In like a little tag? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so we'll click that and we'll click next. And then it's gonna want us to name our application or you probably, what, what is Mine says you? continue. Um, configure your new console application, target framework, what is it, dot, .NET 7.0. That's perfect. Yep, we'll keep that. So I'm going to change mine from console app 1. I'm going to name it um, our YouTube live stream. And uh, I will click next. And then that's where I click dot .NET 7. Okay. Um, you can click next on this, and then that's where you will give it a name. So there's the difference between Mac and Windows. And so you can name yours anything you want. Mine's YouTube live stream. Yours can be um, learn C sharp or, or anything you want. Okay. Got it. All right. So we'll click create or finish or whatever yours says at the bottom right. It says right. create. Perfect. Mine does too. I can't use sharp hashtag. Correct. Yeah, that's a special character. Learning. So that from what everyone could have read in the um, description, I'm brand new to this. So I am just waiting for his instruction to walk me through every single step. Looks like you have some kind of menu thing. I do. Visual Studio would like to access files. Okay. Yeah. And then you can make this bigger, uh, like full screen, I think. All right, and here we are. So you see the same thing I see, I think, right? Just like console dot right line, um, hello yes. world. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we are going to uh, remove this, so we can go ahead and just delete all of this. And okay. we're gonna we're gonna look around Visual Studio for a moment. So on your left and on my right, we have this Solution Explorer. Yes. Do, you, do you see that? And so Solution Explorer is going to show a top level solution. And that is this, um, like mine says solution, YouTube live stream. Yours says what? Uh, YouTube learn C sharp. YouTube learn C sharp. And then under that, I have my project. This is different than a solution. And so a solution has one or more projects. And so my project is called, it has the same name as my solution. So that gets a little confusing, but mine is also YouTube live stream and yours is probably the, the same as your solution. Mm -hmm. And then if that's expanded out, then under here we have maybe a folder with dependencies. And then we have um, this interesting file program.cs. Do you see that? Uh -huh. I have Pro connected services and then dependencies and program.cs. Perfect. And program.cs is actually uh, kind of default and provided to us. Um, prior to .NET 7 or possibly even .NET 6, um, there used to be a file structure that uh, would occur, but here um, they have like a streamlined template now, so we could actually have a blank file and it's and it's perfectly valid because it, it gets injected into a main function. So we're not going to worry about that too much. First thing we're going to do is run it and make sure our program runs. So in order to run, we want to look for user input, and so you're, we're going to type this. You're going to follow what I typed. Okay. And we don't need to know what it does yet, but the, the important thing or how it does it, I'm going to tell you what it does. So we're going to type console, C O N S. On the second line or the first? It doesn't matter. Yeah, I do second line because I like to put a little space in between, but white space is something we'll learn about, and um, it's important to, to understand that uh, white space gets overlooked, but it's okay. So on second line, it's fine. So console, I did C O N S and stopped typing to show you this thing called IntelliSense. So IntelliSense is this window and it tries to predict what you're typing. As soon as you're typing and you see something that comes up and you know that that is what you want, like we want console, mm -hmm. we can press tab. And when we press tab, it'll fill in the rest for us. Did it do that for you? I typed the whole word. Okay, that's all right. So we're going to press dot and we're going to get another window. And mine on Windows, this is super cool. So it is saying right line already for me, but yours is just going to suggest right line. Do you see right line in there somewhere? If not, you can start typing it W R I and eventually right mm -hmm. line will pop up. Then we'll press tab. And that'll get us, that'll basically type it out for us. 
And then if we open the parenthesis as it recommends, um, we can type something in here. So we're going to put it in quotes. So we're going to do double quotes inside of those parentheses. Mm -hmm. And inside of here, we're going to say press any key. And we can, this is anything inside these quotes we can put, and it, it's arbitrary, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, but outside of the quotes does matter. So inside the quotes, press any key. We'll press arrow two times to the right to get out of the quotes, then out of the parentheses, and we'll press semicolon. All right, so that is going to tell the user, press any key. Now we need to do something called a read line, which we'll get into. But So that's another console call that we're going to make. So we're going to type console, and then once it is recommended to you, you may press tab. We'll do dot read line, and then just open parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon. Okay, so when mine shows up with multiple options, I'm just pushing the down arrow to get to the one that I want. That's fine. Yep, you can do that. You can use your mouse or you can keep typing and it'll keep filtering down. Any of those are fine. So once you have this, then we can press kind of this play button at the top. And that hopefully is going to build and run and we're not going to have any build errors because if we do, then we have an issue with Visual Studio that we're going to have to figure out. Where is your play button? My oh, play button's at the top. Is. Yours is also at the top. Okay. What do you see? I see windows at the bottom. What's that? What's this little screwdriver? That is uh, pretty much nothing. Oh, it's the okay. Do you have like build output? What's it say? One succeeded. Console dot read line. Let's see, if we stop this. Oh, right here, press oh. any key. It's there now. So that was fixed in, it. I didn't really fix it, but that is in your console. Your console is not popping up with like a terminal window and that's okay. But down here, is there something called console? Package console that you were just hovering over. No, it will be called, I think just console or output maybe. Do you see something like that? Application output? No. Build output. Nope. No. Not errors. Terminal. Terminal. Perfect. That's okay. it. Okay. All right. So in here, can you click in here? And then if you press any key, then it should end the program. Like enter. I guess it's not any key because read line looks for an enter. Okay. And your program ends. Mine says like, hey, uh, your program exited with code zero. Press any key to continue. Yours just ended, right? And now you have a play button up here? Yes. All right, perfect. You don't have to press it again. Okay. Uh, but So that means your program ran to completion. Uh, the benefit of doing that and the reason why we needed to do that is because sometimes um, that project setup might have something wrong with it. And it really is a pain to get all the way through developing something to find out you can't even test it. So we want to test early and often. So uh, that's what we've done so far. So uh, right line, read line. That's all we've done so far. Okay. Um, now we can go under these lines. So you can press a couple enters or returns. And we'll take one second to um, kind of talk about this book that we're going to follow. So we're not, we're not following this book as like a read, al read along. Um, this is just to maintain structure. So um, instead of going in all of these different directions on this kind of instruction, I, I want to keep it um, according to some kind of format so it doesn't get confusing. And so I don't jump ahead. And so we'll, we'll follow this book here. It's called the C Sharp Player's Guide. And then I've printed out um, a couple pieces of paper. I'm not going to really show them because I super recommend you go and get this book for yourself. Uh, but part of it, um, it's like a game. It's not to make a game, but it is a game to learn. And so in the beginning, it kind of discusses like the experience points and how you can level up. And it's, I think it's kind of a fun idea. So we're going to follow it. But more importantly, we're going to use it as structure. And so um, I'm not going to teach directly out of the book, but I am going to use the book as uh, a kind of a guide. And so the first thing it's going to talk about is what is C-sharp. You're absolutely more than welcome to read that. Then it goes into what is .NET. Also important, but 
I don't necessarily believe that's important for uh, beginning intro, um, but it is important to understand the difference between C Sharp and .NET and what they do. But walking into something like programming, I'm just not convinced that uh, that's something we need to know right now that's gonna, I think, overwhelm you. Uh, so we'll move on. So level two is getting the IDE. We already did that actually. So uh, that's what we did with getting Visual Studio. Um, so we'll move past that. And now it talks about creating your first program. Uh, so the very first program every programmer makes is something called Hello World. And we already kind of did that, but we called ours Press Any Key. So a program is what we just made. It has an entry point and that is called main. And then it has an exit and that's where the program finishes executing all of its statements and there are no errors. So that's what we have. So our program does two things. It writes a line out to the user, which we put press any key, which QA would say that's a bug because you can't press any key. You can only press enter, right? <laughs> so QA, yeah. would, QA would log a bug against that. Uh, and then read line actually um, is going to uh, wait for that return carriage or enter, and then it's gonna go to the next statement. But since there are no more statements, this program c completes. Uh, so that is the, the proverbial hello world. And so what we can do is change this to like check the box because we do have to do hello world. Everybody has to. So okay. we're gonna change press any key to hello comma world exclamation. And then uh, we can do a space and this is all within the quotes still. We'll do hello comma world exclamation space. Okay. And then we'll say uh, press enter to continue. And then dot, 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 I think dot, dot, dot kind of tells the user it's their turn. Um, so if we run this again, just to, I mean, everything should be the same. We, we made no like functional difference here, but if we run it again, then we should get that terminal pop up and it should say, hello world, press yep. enter to continue. When we press enter, it continues, right? It goes, right. It closes the program. Okay, you, we have done our hello world. That is the that is the proverbial hello world. All right. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get into actual programming. Do you want to take a break or something, or are you good? I'm good. Thank okay. You. So today, variables. Um, we'll talk about data types and variables today. We're not gonna get into anything too crazy for episode one. I think okay. I think all of that prep work we did to get set all this set up and working was decent. And then I think getting uh, Visual Studio working is good and writing some code is good and we'll learn about variables and then in an effort to not fry brains we'll wrap it up there okay all right so variables uh variables are anything i mean it's basically what it sounds like do you like what would you guess that variables are uh they change they could be whatever you need it to be yeah they can change yeah so we get to name variables and we get to ass assign basically data types to them and we can put values in them. So a variable is gonna look like this, and you can type it with me. Okay. So we're gonna say int, int, space, and then we'll say size, space, equals, space, zero, semicolon. So this does a couple things, right? So this says what the type of the variable is, it says what the name of the variable is and it assigns a value. So the type of the variable is, is an int or an integer and we'll talk about data types a little bit after this but we won't talk about the structure here. Uh, size is arbitrary, we can name this anything we want. So we pick size, but it could be age or um, length or height or width or anything. Anything that makes sense as a number. The equals is an assignment operator. So that's how we're gonna assign a value to the variable. And then we initialize it with some starting value and we chose zero. Okay, so now you have int size equals zero. So we're gonna do another one of these console.write lines. So let's do console.write line and let's write size. and then we'll, we'll put size into those parentheses and we will close the parentheses and we will use a semicolon. Then you can go down two more lines, it's fine. 
Now we're going to say size equals one. with a semicolon. That's an important thing that I should note is all of our statements end with a semicolon. That is one thing I have picked up from listening to you. Yeah, and watching. But like, that's <laughs> another thing. Like, these are questions that uh, I don't even think to answer. But um, so these are called statements. Anything you write is a statement and statements end with a semicolon. Some statements are multi-line and that's why a semicolon is important because it tells, it tells Visual Studio the statement is over. So. Size equals one, semicolon. Let's do another console.write line size. And once you're done, go ahead and run this. Uh, no, don't run the program yet. Let's cut this stuff at the top. So like you can hover over it, con command X for you, control X for me. And then we're gonna paste it at the bottom. And the reason for that is this read line, we want this to be the very last thing in our program because this is what is going to stop it from executing and wait for the user to, to respond. So if we don't have that, then we won't even see all of this because it's just going to run through and close. Okay. okay. So we have write line and read line at the bottom. And at the top, we have our variable assignments and the console.write line. So if we press run, we should see uh, a couple lines, we see zero, one, and then hello world, press enter to continue. Is that what you see or do we have an issue? I don't see that. Is it still just building? Oh, terminal. What do you see? Nothing. Uh, make your terminal window bigger. There we go. Oh, never mind. It's okay. User error. User error. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so we see zero, we see one, and we see hello world, press enter to continue. Yes. Looking at the code, can you see what, what is happening? Where's that zero coming from? Why is zero in this window? The right line size. Size, right? Because size is a name, but we're not printing the name. We're printing the value in the name. Right, the name of the variable. Yeah, that's exactly right. So where's the one coming from? Um, the same thing, but we had it after size equals one. Yeah, so we changed the value of size and then we printed that again. And so the, the only thing we're demonstrating here is that size is a variable. Variables can change, that's why they're called variables. And we give it a name, the name doesn't matter. We can name it anything we want. Um, in this series, we're always going to give variables meaningful names. We're not going to ever name something X. So um, unless it's a plot on a, on a graph and then it, X makes sense. But otherwise, X doesn't make sense. So uh, we're going to name things that have a size. We're going to name it size. And uh, so we have a variable named size. We get to name it whatever we want. We assigned it an initial variable, I mean initial value, and we printed that out to the console. Then we change the variable value, right? Because variables can change. And then we printed it again. So we called console.writeLine twice and we got two separate lines written. That kind of makes sense, right? Write line, line written. Because the program is reading from top to bottom. So it's not, when I change the variable later on, it's not changing it further up in the code base. It's Correct. It's just changing from then on. Right, yep, from Until then on. Until I change it again. Exactly right, yep. And then after that, it's the same program we already wrote. It's hello world, press any or press enter to continue. So if we do that, our program terminates. All right, so I that, just had to click back in it. So that is a variable. Under under console.write line size, our second one. Okay. I want you to guide us in making another variable. It's an integer, name it what you want and assign it a meaningful value. Okay. Walk us through it. Uh, int, int, I N T, yep. space. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be a number value? Int is always a number okay. with, with no decimals. So, like, for example, we can talk about uh, age. Pascal. Age is good, yeah. Age, okay. Oop, I put a plus sign instead of equals. Space. Space. Equals. Equals. Space. Space. 20. 20. Perfect. And then? 
Semicolon. Semicolon, yes. All right? Very important. And then let's display that out to the console. How are we going to do that? Uh, you're going to return a couple times. Doesn't sure, matter. yeah, it doesn't matter. Console yep. dot right line. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I can't do that while I'm... Console dot right line, open parentheses. Mm -hmm. We're going to do age. Close parentheses already there for us, and then a semicolon. Yep. All right, let's test it. Okay. Test early, test often, right? Yeah. So what I see is 0, 1, 20, hello world, press enter to continue. That's what I see. Perfect. Pressing enter to continue. All right. So you've walked us through a variable. Under age, let's talk about the other data types, okay? So integer is a whole number um, with, so obviously that means, that means no decimals, like no period and then series of decimal points. Um, but it can go negative and positive. And in fact, it can go a very large amount negative and positive. Okay. Um, it's not arbitrary. There is a distinct value at how long integers can go. But um, I've never in my professional career had to a, a wonder how much um, the this, uh, size limit is. But uh, Visual Studio does a great job in um, telling you anyway if you go over uh, but we're not ever going to go over, so we're not going to discuss those numbers yet, and we'll circle back when they're important. Um, but so that's an integer. Integer is what? Uh, a number that you can change. Well, it has to have a numerical value. Yep. And not a decimal. Not a decimal. And positive Whole or negative. Whole number, positive or negative. Yep, that's an integer. The next thing is a string. And so a string is any sequence of characters in quotations. So what we have in console.write line, hello world, please enter to continue dot dot, or press enter to continue dot dot dot. Mm -hmm. That is a, called a string literal because we it's literally the string we assign. It's not a variable, it's a string literal. So what we can do is store that in a variable. So let's do that. So let's, uh, under console.write line age, let's, okay. do, let's type string, lowercase string, space, and we'll call this instruction. Then we're gonna do another space and say equals, and then in quotes, hello, comma, world, just the same thing. Press enter to continue, dot, dot, dot. No parentheses in this one. And then we'll end quote and semicolon. Let me know when done. I'm done. Okay, so then on that line that we have console dot right line, hello world, blah, blah, blah. Delete everything in the string, including the two uh, del uh, quotation marks. Okay. So we'll just end up with console.write line with, with empty parentheses. And in here, we'll type instruction. And then we're going to run our program again. And we're going to see that now we're printing literally, I mean, the same thing, but now we're printing that from a variable, right? The same way we did size and age. Okay. Do you have that? I do. Okay, so that now that's a variable, we can change it as much as we want as well, but we, we're not going to. It's interesting because I am able to see both screens, so it's interesting for me to see the difference in Visual Studio on a Mac versus a Dell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, there are significant Yours differences. Yours suggests... My, the the my, Dell suggests diff, like the next line. Like mm -hmm. his said age equals 30. Mine didn't suggest that, but mine highlights instruction where I have both of them to show me that, like, that's the variable I'm using, and I like that. Mine didn't, yours didn't show that before. But you have to, when you click it, so if you click size, it'll it'll show all the references to size, and I'm going to tell you later why that's so important. Oh, I like it's that. It's very, very helpful when we start getting into scopes. I don't want to get too... Well, don't go too far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so... Stick with this. So, uh, before we move on, let's talk about comments, because... Um, uh, comments are a very easy concept, and we want to start wrapping them, including them in our code, because our code base is more than one line of code. Okay. So above size, so like basically line one, which I'm going to press enter to make that the new line two. Um, I'm going to start a comment. So comments are typically like 
they're green in Visual Studio, but they might be another color based on your theme. Uh, but the, the point of comments are they are they are in the code, but they're not for Visual Studio. They're for me. They're for you. They're for the developer. Okay. And so comments are started with two forward slashes, slash slash, and you'll notice that it turns green from there. Yeah, mine is just a darker green. So sure, but and it could be a different color based on your theme, but slash slash. And now we're gonna type this is a comment, and then we'll press enter. That slash slash comment is a single line comment, meaning what we put under here is no longer a comment. That's imp it's important. Um, so slash slash starts a comment on a line. Mm -hmm. And we are going to do another slash slash. And here we're going to talk about size. So we're going to say um, um, create a well, or an integer for some size, right? And then we could even discuss it further and say and set to zero okay there are um, just to throw this out there and point it out um, th there are principles in programming that we're breaking right now but we're learning so it's okay but to point them out for anybody who is going to be watching this for criticism only um, this this yeah this is about the dry principle you shouldn't have a comment that tells you what you're doing if you can read it in the code. Anyway, so for all of you, thank you for showing up, but this is an introductory course and we're gonna, we're gonna teach some things and so we might, uh, we might be verbose in how we type things out. So we have a slash slash and we can put a space between them if you want, if it's, it's whatever is readable for you because that's the point of these comments, they're for you. They're for your coworkers. Um, they're for future you. Future you will think past you if you document your code well and if you name your variables in meaningful ways. So, create an integer for some size and set to zero. Perfect, that's what this does. So these are comments. The reason I wanted to do that is because now, if we go um, to the int age equals zero, um, we're gonna put a comment, oops, we're gonna put a comment here, and we're gonna say um, int colon poll numbers positive or negative. And this is going to be kind of something for us to look back on, right? So int poll numbers, positive or negative. And then I'm going to say string colon, and this is a sequence of characters And this sequence of characters is wrapped in double quotes. So sequence of characters wrapped in double quotes. I say double quotes because single quotes serve a purpose. And that is different. In some languages, they're a little bit more dynamic. But here in C Sharp, they're not. They serve a different purpose. And we'll get to those possibly soon. I mean, like in the next couple minutes. Um, all right. So that's string. So we're going to drop a line. And now we're going to, well, we won't do it. We'll do a comment after. So after this, we're going to type uh, float, F-L-O-A-T. This one gets confusing for a lot of people. Um, float is a keyword. And all of these blue things are keywords. Um, they, that means like you can't name your variable these things because they mean something. Okay. Uh, so like they're data types in this situation. Anyway, so float, and this is a decimal point. So something that's a decimal point might be um, weight, right? So we'll put weight here. And you might equal, uh, like, let's say 100.0F. And then we'll put a semicolon. And then we're going to talk about it because floats, they get confusing for people. Okay. All right. Float means floating point integer or something, right? Like... Uh, I think it's floating point integer, and we could Google it to find out. But uh, basically what it means is we have floating points now. We have decimal places. All right. And it goes to some very large number on both sides. So, And what I mean by both sides is before the decimal place and after the decimal place. Um, if you initialize a, a float like 100.0F, it... C Sharp and Visual Studio do a really good job of making sure it pretty much is 100.0, but these decimal places, they have some garbage at the end, but we like cut it and we'll just say it's 
We don't cut it. Visual Studio does that for us. That's float. Then the next, so let's put a comment above that. So this is um, float. And let's do a quick, let me, I'll do a quick Google. Uh, because I believe float does mean floating point, I believe integer, but I guess not. Let's see. A floating point number. All right, it's floating point number. <laughs> All right, floating point number. And so uh, we will put that here. So floating point number. And all that is, is um, it's basically an integer, but with decimal places. So um, I think they call them real numbers, but I'll put integer with decimal places. Got it. All right. The next one is a double. All right. Double is, in my opinion, more commonly used than float, but it shouldn't be because like, I, it's hard to justify using doubles over floats because of what I'm about to tell you. Double is a double floating point, a double precision floating point number. So that means uh, however long float can go, double can go twice as long. And that is a huge number, and why do we need that? We can use it, and that's great, but if we don't need to, we shouldn't. You know, So uh, float will uh, handle almost everything you need, but the reason double is used more is because of this. So height might be another one, right? So let's do f double height equals, and we'll do it like I'm, I'm six, let's say six feet. You could say two. Well, if I say two, what is that though? Two twelfths, so one sixth, then I don't want to do all that division. Well, then why don't you just make it an even six feet? Because that's, we got a, we got a double here. So we'll say 6.1, okay? So 6.1, semicolon, and Based on that, can you see why double might be used more often? It's, you said it's more accurate? No. What the heck is that F on float? I don't know. Right. I mean, I'll tell you, it just tells Visual Studio that it's, that it's, a, it's a float. But double doesn't have to worry about that. You can. You can put a D there, but you don't have to. Hmm. Um, I... If you remove the F, you get an error. So that's the thing. Double is um, like a little more lenient on how you use them. And that's why they're used more often, I believe. Will you heat up some water? Yeah. We have our little setup here. Oh, camera moved. <laughs> Don't worry, we're almost done. How's your brain? Not bad. Oh, good. I think once we start using uh, these in real life, it might be a little bit clearer. Yeah. Because right now, like I, I see what you're showing me, and it's just a little fuzzy. Sure. As to what, like when these would apply, but I'm sure that that's coming. Yep. 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 We have a couple more of these data types to get through. Then we have a magic word to get through, and then we can just basically wrap it up but getting putting this into the real world you'll see how that works it's yes I'm gonna click click the button all right all right so this is a double so we can put a comment on here and this is just double precision float and this is basically the same thing just longer float oh I wonder how loud that is Mm, I did not take that into account. I can, nah, it's fine. They'll be okay. We're, we're heating water. It uh, doesn't take long. I'm making tea. Sorry, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we won't do that next time. Allegedly. Maybe we'll just move it, you know? I don't know. Let me know when you're ready. Are I'm you ready. good? You caught mm -hmm. up here? Okay. I am. Uh, so double height equals 6.1. All right, next thing we need is, um, okay, so so char, character, so this is a single, what? I figured out what my screwdriver is. It's just the line that I'm on. Yeah, so it actually, <laughs> it's more than that. When you click that screwdriver, it gives you some options. Oh, well, so, at least for me right now, it's telling me which line I'm on. All right, so, uh, so char 
is a character, so C H A R. Okay. And so this is basically kind of like what a string is composed of. A string is a series of characters. That's why we wrote that, and that was important. A string is a series of characters. A char, a char is one character. So let's say um, char um, answer, right? Answer equals, and then we're going to put this in single quotes, and let's just put a capital A and then a semicolon. So in single quotes is the A, and then out of the single quotes is a semicolon. It's always important to have a space between your equal sign. Nope, just looks nicer. Okay. It's easier for me to read that way. I just didn't know if that would cause any problems. Nope, not important. Okay. In fact, if you wanted, you can put this equal sign on the next line, but it's not easier to read that I way. Don't, I we, don't want that. We always want to make things easier to read. So, char answer equals, and then in single quotes, A. Uh, so, an instruction, that instruction, string, is literally a series or a sequence of these chars. And so when we go into string interpolation and we get into manipulating these strings, we'll see exactly how they're related. But we're not gonna get into that yet. But just know that strings and chars are, are very closely related. All right, right above that, we'll put a comment, we'll put char, and we'll say this is a single character. And then we'll also annotate that it's wrapped in single quotes. All right, so our primitive data types are int, string, float, double, char. Am I missing anything? Let me think for a second. I don't think I am. Uh, I think we can pretty much cover everything with these. I mean, you get into um, like object types, but as far as primitive da data types go, um, that's why we have this book. Let me just peruse this book real quick while you mix up your tea. Okay. Is this hot? Oh, that's awesome. That's not even hot under there. How neat is that? Pretty neat. All right, let me check this uh, player's guide for what, what he's got here. This guy's book is awesome. I mean, I definitely recommend picking it up. So he's got strings and literals. He's getting into namespaces pretty quickly. We're not going to do that today. Um, I just The biggest fear I have is overloading a brain and then... You can't absorb anything, but then we continue from there next time, and so there's a whole miss. So okay. I don't, I don't really like to do that. Um, oh, all right. Well, jumped out around a little bit, but that's okay. I mean, uh, we're not gonna follow this exactly. Be oh. Well, I said that we were gonna use it in your teaching. Yeah, I mean, we're going to use it to, for structure, but we, like... We will use it, but we're not going to stick to it exactly. And that's only because he already knows what he's doing, and I don't. So <laughs> So as it turns out, I forgot, there's like byte, short, long, uint, all that. We almost never use these unless we're doing like image processing and things. So okay. we're going to skip that for now. We'll come back to them. Um, I don't think it's important to jump into those right now. So, int, sure. char, string, floating point. Ah, oh, of course, I forgot. Bool, Boolean, we do have to cover this. This is okay. immensely important. Um, used all the time, and I just whiffed on it. So, uh, that's why I'm glad we have this book. So, let's cover bool real quick. So, under char, enter, enter, and we will put bool... And now we're also going to kind of cover some of the ways we name variables. It's, it's kind of important. So it's called Pascal casing or camel casing. And so what that is, is um, you can start with an uppercase or lowercase letter. That is a naming convention that we will talk about later. But for now, you've noticed we've been starting these with lowercase letters. So that's yeah. what we're going to do. Booleans are questions, right? They're yes or no questions. So we name our variables in such a way. So if I am going to use a Boolean to say like this glass is full, it could be yes or no. It's either full or it's not. It doesn't matter how full, that might be like an integer or a float for a percentage. But is full is either yes or no. So that's what we're gonna name this variable. We're gonna call it is full. And it's gonna be lowercase is, capital F, no space, 
I S capital F and then lowercase U L L. And as we added more names to this variable name, we would use a capital letter moving forward on each first letter of each word, no spaces. So it's camel casing. Okay. Each of those capital letters are a hump. All right. So bool is full equals and here is false, uh, but it could be true. Those are your two options. You have true and you have false on a Boolean. Does that make sense? Yes or no. Yes or no, true or false, on or off, yes. So you have two options. Booleans are bits. It's zero or one. Okay. But we call them something else. We call them either um, true or false to make it look nicer instead of zero or one. Um, we call it, and actually, if you were to use numbers, Boolean is zero as false or not zero as true. One, two, three, four, five, and two infinity is true. Zero is false. It's the only false. So zero is empty, false, nothing. All right. So Boolean, two options. What are they? True or false. True or false. On or off. Yes on or, or no. off, yes or no. When typing, we cannot use yes or no or on or off. We have to use true or false. Okay? So true or false. Boolean, okay. true or false. All right. So in the comment above that, we're going to write slash slash bool colon. And this is um, uh, uh, true or false, basically. This is a flag that is either true or false. They call them flags in programming. Uh, you can use them all over the place. Um, flag, like turn the flag on or turn the flag off. You'll hear that kind of a lot. And, and that's like a big old indicator, like, hey, this is a Boolean. If it's on, it's true. If it's off, it's false. Um, so that's a Boolean. Any questions about Boolean? So um, zero is always false. Always false, yep. Can I add that into my comment? Absolutely. Okay. And yeah, you're right. It's, it's, it's zero or not zero, right? Like those are your options. Because even negative one is still true in the comparator, which we'll get into in another episode, probably probably next episode. Uh, and then I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I just love this stuff. So anyway, Ooh, moving on. I put that in the wrong place. Um, let's see. So type in parents. That's right. So we're going to get into that magic word that I told you about. Okay. I put zero is always false. Not zero is true. Not zero is true. Yep, that's true. Okay. All right. Type inference. This is a magic word. Right? So when we are declaring a variable, so we've been doing two things. We've been declaring variables and initializing them. Right? You can just declare a variable. So if we go up by age and um, above that, like right under this is a comment, we could say like int, um, let's do string. String name, semicolon. That's called um, declaring a variable. Uh, if we do that, so I guess go ahead and then above, above that, put a comment declaring a variable. So this is declaring a variable. Um, this variable has no value. So there's nothing in there. It's an empty variable and that's dangerous. When we, um, declare variables, it's best to just initialize them also. However, you don't have to. So under string name, let's make it kind of like another line, a line of space. And let's say name equals, and then in mine, I'm going to put in quotes Patrick. You can put Jess or Jessica. I'll close the quotes. I'll do a semicolon, press enter to kind of put some space around it. Okay. And, and then above that, I'm going to put a comment, initialize a variable. All right, so um, this is how you can separate it out if you would like to, but we've been doing both at the same time. We have been declaring and initializing variables. That's important because as you get into type inference, you have to initialize variables. You can't just do this magic word. And let me show you what I mean. So under bool is full, let's go ahead and drop a couple lines. Oh, I need a semicolon, number one rule. All right. Here, 
we're gonna we're going to say var v a r. It's gonna turn blue. Eventually, maybe not right now. V a r. Mine is blue. All right, mine is not. It should be var, and we're gonna say material. Material equals. And now, this var is a question mark. We don't know what it is. Let's remove the equal and put a semicolon. We're gonna get a red line because you cannot do this. I haven't yeah. gotten a red line yet. You did? Mm -hmm. Perfect. We. I. I don't know why I don't have a red line. You should have a red line. You. You can't have an unknown variable type. You have. So the inference part happens on assignment, right? When you initialize the variable. So if we get rid of that semicolon and say equals one and we hover over material, we're gonna see that it's an int. Now if you hover over it, it should tell you that this is an int. Do you mm -hmm. see that? All right, now if we take away the one and put a string wood, if we hover over material, we'll see it's a string now. You capitalized it. Does that matter? It doesn't matter. It's anything inside of the quotes is arbitrary, right? String. String. Okay, let's delete that and say true, not in quotes. Now material is a Boolean. Do you see that? Yeah. All right, but here's the thing. Once a variable has been assigned a type, you cannot change that type. If material becomes a Boolean and we go on down in code, that is what it is. We cannot change that. Some programming languages do allow you to. C Sharp is not one of them. So when you use var, it's actually a little more efficient. You should always use var. Um, unless you're declaring, we'll get into that later. Almost always use var, okay? Okay. Um, so right above that, we're gonna, we're gonna put var colon, um, and then we'll say inferred data type. And then if you want it in parentheses, maybe put like based on assignment. Because it is. I mean, if you were to change this to like we showed one, it would be an int or 1.0 would be a double or 1.0 F, it would be a float. So um, that is type inference. That's the magic keyword var. Okay. Then we don't have to keep typing all of these. We just get to say var. I love var. Anyway, go so ahead. So how would you use it? You don't have to type like float, bool. What do you, you just type var? Var, yeah. In fact, we're not. You type var and then whatever it is after that. Correct. So all of the things we've done above here. So if we hover over answer, we'll see the answer is a char. If we change char to var, answer is still a char because we assigned it a char. So if, what matters is what you put after the equal sign. So you can use var to be any of those things. Any of those things. But once you set it, then that data type sticks. Like I set material to true, so material is always a Boolean. If I come down here like we did with age or size, we change size from zero to one, I can't change material equals um, Patrick, it'll say um, invalid. Are you missing like cannot implicitly convert type string to bool? Oh. So, oh, you, can you type that too? Because they can't see what I'm doing. Yes. So right now I have var material equals true, and you want me to do material equals in quotes. I guess I didn't put my semicolon. Okay. Yep. And you should get an error. And not implicitly convert type string to bool. Right. Because even though var material, so even though we didn't say material is a Boolean, we initialized it as a Boolean. And that means it is a Boolean for the rest of its life. It cannot change. So if we changed it instead to false, that would be perfectly legal. And now the value of this variable is false. Does that make sense? Again, I believe it will make more sense once we get further in and we're using these. I agree. This is like a hello, I'm Jess. This nice is just to meet a, you an introduction yeah. to what variables are. Exactly. And, okay. And we're going to use variables literally every day.
So like, um, they are very common and uh, I'm gonna use them all the time. Okay. All right, any questions about what we've done today? Yeah, I thought of one. Sure. Um, I can change any line of code that I want into a comment by putting those two. Yeah, that's called commenting out code. And so that is helpful with debugging, which we'll get into. Um, it's helpful for like cutting out culprits of what could be um, like problematic code. You can, you can comment it out so that just you just rule it out. And then if that is a problem, we'll delete it. We're not going to leave commented code, but we'll get into all of that when we start when we're way further along and we're talking about um, using this stuff in the real world. That's another thing we didn't really talk about. Maybe we'll talk about it again at the beginning of the next episode. But the goal here is like, if Jess likes this and she's she's great at it, the goal here is to make her be an actual programmer. So um, I've worked with plenty of, uh, I would say, subpar programmers, and I'm not going to let my wife be one. So uh, we're going to teach properly and we're going to do things properly all the way from the beginning. So we're going to comment our code. We're going to use proper variable names. We're not going to leave chunks of commented code around. Yeah, we're going to do it all right, all the time. So do you have anything else for that? No, I'm excited to keep learning. Awesome. So we have some XP to grab, actually. Okay. So I'm going to take a look here. We didn't even really do the knowledge check. I guess we don't have XP to grab. So we don't. Well, I'm not going to cut corners on this either. We'll take a look at the book next time. Um, there are some side quests and things, and uh, yeah, maybe that'll give you guys some time to pick up your own copy also. So uh, next time we will get into this book, and I don't really want to show this page, but this is the XP page. Um, it's in the book, and uh, once you get the book, you can you can grab your own XP page, and we'll follow along. Basically, uh, you check off basically the like the um, little challenges and the boss fights and um, but it's basically like milestones and accomplishments during our learning journey, and that's how we'll level up. But yeah, grab yourself a copy of this book, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. Thanks.